33 and 34. Where Paul here continues with this list of questions. Where he said, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are going to be with us today. Thank you, Lord, because your faithfulness remains forever. In fact, Lord God, your love endures forever and your mercy as well. And today, Lord God, we are continuing to say more your goodness in our lives. We pray, Lord God, that you're going to bless everyone today, every member of the church, every guest, Lord God, every visitor. We know that you have something in store for us, even as we go to your word. Your word, of God, is the lamp to our feet and the, and the light to our path. It is food for our souls, O God. We can never live, O God, spiritually without your food. We, we read it, Lord God, in our devotions. We listen from it, Lord God, through the sermons. And we know, Lord God, that you will always speak to us, for you are a God who is alive and speaking to your people. We pray that you are going to manifest your glory this time. You are going, Lord God, to strengthen our faith through, through your word. Because your word of God is the source of our faith. Bless now your name, O Lord God. Cover us with your precious blood. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, Paul continues with his list of questions. Questions where he said, Who shall bring a charge against you? Who shall bring a charge against God's people? Who shall bring a charge against God's chosen ones? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Do you sometimes feel condemned and uh, when you, you commit sin or you or mistakes against God? Sometimes you feel like you are so condemned when you 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 did something wrong in God, despite that you are already a believer. Sometimes you feel so down and and uh, feel that we have committed such sin. And do you also feel sometimes that after you have committed such sin or mistake, you feel damaging, damaging accusations against you? It seems that there is somebody who is accusing you of what you have done wrong. Right? Minsan, magkasala tayo sa Panginoon, in spite of good believers tayo. Sinagal niyo, bakit believer na ito ngayon? Bakit pa ako nagkasala? Bakit pa ako nagkamali? Brother, sister, I have a for you. No one is perfect. But we still live in this world. God is still working in our lives. We are not yet finished with God. And God as well is not yet finished with us. We know that He is our comforter. We know that He is the one who will even help us in times of needs. Even in the time where we are we are down because of our misdoings, our our uh, uh, limitations, our weaknesses are, are growing even daily, even as we want to die daily in the Lord Jesus Christ. But somehow, the goodness is God is still working in our lives. So, we feel sometimes that whenever we sin or make mistakes against God, we feel so accused. And actually, it's not just a feeling. It's, it's that it's something that we feel or we think or we imagine. It is something that uh, the truth tells us and the truth is the devil, your enemy. See, Satan, Satan, the devil, our enemy, wants us to be confused and wants us to feel guilty and that you and I will feel that we are still sinners and not deserving to fellowship with Jesus Christ. We feel that way many times. Sabihin natin sa nasarili, siguro hindi ko talaga ako Christian, bakit ako ganito pa? Bakit pa ako, bakit pa ako nagkasala? Bakit pa ako gumagawa pa ng kasalanan? In spite that, I don't want to live in sin anymore. Why did I sin? Through my, through my thinking, through my eyes, through my words, through my actions. Bakit? Bakit ganon? And it's because there's the accusation that is so strong and what, what causes this accusation actually Paul begins Paul begins with uh, 
with, with a legal language here in this verse, sabi niya dito, who shall condemn us? Who shall bring us to against a charge against God's elect? Sino yung mag-accuse sa atin, magdadala sa atin sa korte? Actually, it is a court. It's a charge or, or an accusation is a legal term used in the, in the courtroom. Whenever you sin, someone will, that you have offended to will bring you to court and that's a charge against you. That's an accusation in court. Paul, the apostle, is using the same thing here. He said, who shall accuse you in court? Who shall, who shall charge you? Being God's chosen one. Being, being God's elect. Being a, a child of God who is going to accuse you. And, but who could effectively do such a thing? The scripture provides an immediate answer to that. And it says, Satan is described in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. That he is, or he is the accuser, who stands before God day and night. Day and night. Satan will stand day and night accusing you and I, accusing the brothers and the sisters in the Lord. Satan never stops working. He is a hard worker. He works 24 7. I don't know who we talk. Tayo din, isang humihinto tayo eh. But Satan will not stop. He will always accuse you. That is why he tempts us as believers. That's why he tempts us all the time because after we are tempted, after we yield to temptation, then that's the time that he could accuse you. You see, you are not a child of God. Why? You are still sinning. Why do you, why do you speak the same things in ways? Why do you think the same way? Why do you look at things that are not good? That's not the sign of God. Especially in the, in the internet today. When you try to think, something will pop out in your, in your eyes. And those things will lead us. You want me to be tempted in high measures. People today, you see, uh, today, even six years old, six years old girl, and just yesterday in Cebu, I think, was raped by several people. Someone saw this little girl walking, bleeding on the road. And a driver saw him, saw her, and brought him to the hospital and found out that he was raped. Why? Because of the internet. And sometimes we as Christians are easy to be tempted in this way. Even how we, how we control our anger. Many times I, I, I was angry with my children. Sometimes I said, Lord, what's this happening? to me and again angry. Although the Bible says that you can be angry and do not sin or cannot, will not sin, but sometimes our anger will bring us to sinfulness. Why? Why are this? Because the devil is always tempting us and when we are tempted, he is now ready to accuse you and say, you see, you are not really a child of God. Why you still do these things? Why? But the Ba't dapat gumagawa ng mga bagay na yan? And when we fail God, when we fail the Lord Jesus, the devil keeps telling us of our limitations, our shortcomings. He accuses us in order to take away our assurance, our joy and salvation, our consolation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, he accuses us because so that we will be discouraged so that we will feel guilty and eventually give up and stop following the Lord Jesus Christ. If there's one thing that the devil would like to do, he, he wants you to see. He wants to see you no longer serving the Lord and say, I didn't see you as a child of God. Maybe I'm not a child of God. Maybe I'm not a child of God. Nonsense! We have to decide. God knows that ahead of time. Yes, of course. But it is our decision. We need to decide, say, Lord, I want to stay on God. I want to stay in spite of the accusation that the devil has done to me. Diba? Usahin ba? Discouraged na na? Kay Murag, lahat ang mong hibati, you feel so much guilt in your heart. But to believe the devil is insulting us and our God. If you believe the lies of the enemy, you are 
allowing him to insult you and insult our Lord Jesus Christ. Hinting that God could never forgive us, even if we sin now that we are Christians, he will hint to us that we don't have the ability, we cannot repent again because there's no second repentance. Nonsense! That's, what, that's not what God's word says. The Bible says to the believers, if you sin against God, you will go to God and ask for forgiveness. And the Lord, the Bible says, He is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Forgiveness is for you and for me. Amen. Amen. Because God is a forgiving God. Why is it so many scriptures in the Bible? Verses in the Bible that will tell you and me that you can go back to God whenever you err against Him. Why? Because God is telling you that He is the God who is always having an open arm just like a prodigal son who decided to go back to the Father and the Father embraced that, that prodigal son and became part of, of the family again. Amen. 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 Paul is so clear. Paul is so clear, the Apostle Paul, that all such accusations will fail. Amen? Every accusation that the devil will do to you will always fail. They will not succeed. Why? Because we have the righteousness of Jesus. Jesus' righteousness has been imputed to us the moment we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. And in the process of growth, as we grow in the Lord, God is still there accompanying us. He sent the Holy Spirit to be our comforter who works alongside with us. What He will do in us, He will convict us of sin. So that we can continue on until the end. That's what the Bible says. It's so clear. And that's the grace of God. God is so gracious that He will never leave you in spite of what you have done and wrong against Him. Because He has always given us the provision to go back to Him and He has wide open arm to receive us if we ask for forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the one is clear that Paul said in his words that the accusation is, is a failure the accusation of the enemy is a failure because the one who justifies us is the judge of all. Amen. 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 God is the judge of all. And He has declared us just by the invitation of the perfect, when you listen to this, perfect righteousness of Jesus. And the moment we receive Jesus Christ, that perfect righteousness has been imputed to us. And it continues on there as long as we Stay on him. Amen. Just like the criminal who was accused in court, even the enemy, and even if the judge has forgiven him, he must still go back to his cell. No, you must not go back to your cell. You must go out from your cell and live a life, a free, a free life, free from God, free from sin, alive in God. And even if we err again, in the process, in the process, God is still is so loving. His love for us will never end, even if we sin. Amen. 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 Even if you sin as a believer, He still loves you Amen. so much. It will never die. The love of God will never end, even if we sin. He can cry because you will not come back to Him, but He will always. He has sent you the Holy Spirit to always convict you and the moment you come to Him, His love is still there. Amen. He will never stop His love for you. Amen. He loves you so much that He's ever open, uh, have an open arm to receive you and me whenever we fail. Amen. Amen. That's why the moment we, we, we fail, we know it's only a part of of our sinful nature, we're both said that it is part of our own nature that tries to rise again. That's why Paul said, I died daily in Christ. Namatay ako araw-araw sa Panginoong Jesus. Because we need to die daily. It's a daily matter.
longer because tomorrow there's a determination and whenever you support you, you yield to the temptation again there's that accusation. And you feel guilty again and you feel discouraged and you feel like you know, you know, Makuha naman na yung mungo, matumpa naman na yung mungo. Pareha kong mungo, ikaw at katulad ng isang lasing na nahulog doon sa kanan. Sabi ng pulis, Hoy, lasing, huwag kang taadaan yan. Kanal yan. Sa alam ko, sir. Kanal ito. Pero pag hindi ako taadaan dito, mahulog pa rin ako dito. Dito na lang ako taadaan. Mayroon mga Christian na ganun. Dahil natumba na, ay hindi sila mapanak ng Diyos na natumba ko eh. No! You are still a child of God. God provided you His love. Even if you are a sinner, even if you failed Him, Jesus will never fail. Amen! Amen! So, Christ, you know, Christ is without sin. Amen? Jesus is sinless. He is God. And we must know that Christ's perfect righteousness or perfect obedience to His Father is being transferred to us. His righteousness is being obedient to His Father has, has, uh, has been transferred to us in our account. No longer in, in, him, in His account only, but also in our account. In other words, if he is righteous perfectly, we are also perfectly righteous. Because we have Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise for that. Amen. Amen. You are righteous in the sight of God. Yes. You are righteous in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Just continue on. Just continue to say for his love. His love in your life. So, that all the perfect obedience is transferred to us. Na tayo na nagtagay ng ating panataya sa ating Panginoong Jesus. If we put all our faith in Jesus, if we put all our trust in Him, then we are really uh, without sin also just like Him. You know what? Accusations can be painful. It's so painful. But they, you know, it's just like they bounce off from your skin. You can never, you are accused by the enemy and you know what you are standing on. You, are, you know your position in the Lord. All those accusations will just bounce off from you. Amen? Para kang si Superman na tinanggit ng mga maraming bala na tumalbog ng yung mga bala. Why? Because you are a child of God. You remain in Him. You remain in the Lord just like what He said. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me will bear much fruit. But those who will not remain in me will be cut off and be thrown into the fire. And God must have sent out the tears in His eyes. God must have cried when He said those things, those words. He does not want anyone to perish. He wants all of us to go to Him Amen. for eternity. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! <laughs> so, the, the decisions can be painful, but they bounce off from us because God has already declared that we are His children. We are righteous in his sight. So, our decision of all things, and the honor, the decision has already been in. Wala na ang higher court na na pumunta ka. Pumunta sa higher court. Pumunta si Satan sa higher court. No! God is the judge of all. Wala na ibang court na. That's the final court where the judge says, No! I will not listen to your accusation, Satan. My child has come back to me. Amen? Amen. My child is righteous because he's now in my care. Even though he went away from me, but he came back. Amen. He 
asked for forgiveness, he repented again. And now he's clean. So clean in my sight because the righteousness of my son, Jesus Christ, is already in him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says in verse, you know, in what we've said, it is God who justifies. It is God the Father who justifies. Who is He who condemns? Sino ang mag-condemn sa'yo? Sino ang mag-church sa'yo? Sino ang mag-accuse sa'yo? The devil will accuse you. The world, some people will be used by the devil to accuse you of your sin. But no way that you can be successful with your accusation because your accusation is a failure. Why? Because Jesus is not a failure. You have Jesus in your heart, you are always righteous. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. When we are mistaken and commit sin in spite of our being Christians, we can go back to God for forgiveness. Once God has justified us, who can condemn us? Who can condemn you? Amen. Condemnation is gone. Hallelujah. That is why in Romans 8 verse 1 in the same chapter it says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 There is no more no condemnation for you. Because you are in Jesus. Stay in Jesus, friend. Stay in Jesus. You are in the safest place if you stay under His will. In spite of your limitations, in spite of your weaknesses, if you just go back to Jesus, He will always receive you as His child. And the righteousness of Jesus will remain in your heart. Come you go out of praise. In the name of Christ, glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah. She has done all of us. She has done all of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We bless your holy name, O Lord. We thank you, God, for your goodness to us. Shall we sing that song of Isaiah, the first part of our service today? I am a child of God. Hallelujah.